Okay, so my name is Hosan Kang. I'm associate professor at the University of California, Irvine. As part of my NSF project, I have been collaborating with local school district. This year and last year, have been we have been recruiting like 20 science teachers, mostly middle and high school. And a lot of them are like high school chemistry, physics teacher, and we have some middle school teachers. So I've been collaborating with them. And the project is focusing on um, equity and justice centered and also civic engagement focused science instruction. And one of the things that they try to do better is uh, the district has a strong focus around civic engagement pieces. The leadership is a lesser concern about students standardized testing score, but they want students to be ready for the colleagues and ready for the future society. So all these things are coming together. So the the we are co-designing the unit, but unit is the clear goal is uh, justice centered, specifically climate justice, and then addressing the next generation science standard, and then uh, supporting students' civic engagement. So these three things become our goal. So whenever we design the co-design this unit, we are keep reminding ourselves, okay, so we try to bring this justice and then civic engagement pieces and then make sure we are addressing the next generation science standard. This is not easy as you can imagine. We have a pretty, you know, challenging goal, but teachers wanted to learn about it. So we start the conversation. So my PD, sometimes uh, people think my PD is about designing curriculum and assessment. However, for me, promoting equity and justice is not about designing curriculum and assessment. It is about supporting teachers to figure out who they want it to be. And then the curriculum become a tool for them to really enact the kind of identity that they want it to be. So we create a lot of space for them to share their stories and what matters to them and why they are here. And I bring a lot of teachers' voices. And you know, we have a lot of amazing, amazing educator who's deeply committed to this kind of work and alleviate their voices. So find the place where really like sharing, you know, it is not my commitment, it is your voices, this is your language, you are here because of that reason. Let's figure out how we can help you to get there. So more the PD is continuously, we have this vet very intentional work of supporting teachers to do their identity work by telling the story about the student, telling the story about the curriculum. So those are the, the ways in which the PD is designed. Whatever beautiful curriculum you design, beautiful assessment you design, if you don't see racial injustice that is happening in the moment of interaction. We'll keep using the language in a very deficit language to label this case. You're not addressing injustice. So uh, that's why it takes time. And that's why I think it's so important to do this identity work because I have to challenge teachers deficit framing and or a deficit language that they uh, has been enculturated in this society forever. And uh, to uh, without blaming them as an individual, because it, I don't see that as their problem or their fault. They has been grow up in this society and they are participating in this cultural discourse. So how we can helping them to see that, and how we can helping them to see the either intended unintended consequences of using the language and using that framing, using that uh, having that interaction, and what is the consequences? So in the school district, there is a food desert because a uh, dominant population in the community are living under this food desert, meaning that the community doesn't have a, a f access to the fresh food. So the school developed this beautiful farm in, uh, in the school garden. It's a 2.5 acres of huge farm, which the farm is just sitting right next to the chemistry classroom. But then chemistry teachers never have been using that farm as a space for learning. But it's not because they don't like it, but they, they don't have a difficulty in making the connection of content of chemistry 
and then using like farm as a space for learning because as you know it is not straightforward so toward what end the students can contribute to addressing some of the injustice that our community are experiencing around the topic of food insecurity and also how we can attending and addressing more global problem that we are challenging, which is around climate change and climate justice related issue, which is also relating to the food issue. It's beyond just eliciting initial thinking. It's about making connection and, you know, uh, eliciting students' ideas and also their cultural linguistic resources. So like creating, again, it's the same thing, creating space for students to sharing their stories. And so then that, that way they can be bringing to their stories about food and connection and then begin to make a connection to the garden and then food. So there is a very scaffolded process. And I think that he serves it a really amazing job. And because this uh, school site has a, a highly linguistically rich environment. And a lot of kids are multilingual students, more than like 70%. And then like using that linguistic cultural resource, not as a hook and really like honoring those things in a way that help kids to make it uh, as a resource for chemistry learning and also like thriving 